So let me ask. All right. You know how that feels now. And I always like to ask fighters, how does it feel compared to getting a knockout win or compared to getting a submission win? Which one feels better? And now since you got them both, which one would you probably aim for? Well, I'm going to tell you the feeling of seeing like a body just like drop cold in the mat. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's just uh, you applying the technique and seeing that. And it's just one touch. It's just, just one second and the body just drops cold and the person cannot move. You know, you literally have control of the person's life in one second. I mean, there's a referee, of course. But um, but yes, for sure. I think uh, either way, you want to finish a fight, you want to win the fight. But uh, of course, Muay Thai or like striking, it, it will be my favorite. Here, One thing I always like to know. What is your mentality like when you're walking out into the octagon? The first thing going through your head, are you in a relaxed, cool state of mind? Is it, are you looking at that person like, this is the person I need to go in there. He's trying to take my lunch money from him. Are you going in there, murder, murder, kill, kill. I got to represent for Colombia. What's going on in your mind when you're walking out to that octagon? Well, every time is different. You know, every, every time, every fight is a different moment of your life. And your training camp or the months before a fight, you prepare in a different way. Your your mind is in a different stage, you know. So every time I walk to to fight, um, it's a different feeling, you know. Sometimes I feel nervous. Sometimes I feel like I just want to kill this person. Sometimes I just want to feel the moment <laughs> of walking, you know, and enjoying the music and like, man, this is this is my job, you know. This is my job, and I have the opportunity that as soon as they close the cage, I can, you know, start the fight. So, you know, there's infinite things that happen in my mind and it really depends on, you know, the, the fight. But, um, but yeah, it's a very unique moment. Yeah, speaking, I mean, your next fight, I mean, that was a hell of a way to bounce back. Why? I was in the arena, UFC 214 versus Shayna Dobson. I remember that one vividly. Uh, I got to go to the event and everything. So, yeah, I still remember and I still got pictures go, of like Let's all go. the fights on there, too. So I was glad to be there for that first one, too, as well. It was very, very nice that, that fight. You know, I, I feel good. Uh, just some stuff that I also learned from that fight that I could, you know, finish the fight. Yeah, but, and Hinge also says Alexis Davis is a woman who has fought the who's who in her career. Does someone like Davis give you motivation to beat her? Yes, for sure. You know, she has history. She has a lot of experience. And it's an honor to fight someone that has been in the sport for so long, you know. And uh, to show how, you know, the next generation, if I can consider myself from that next generation coming you know, how we, we develop the game and how the new styles are coming. So, yeah, it motivates me. Speaking of a unique moment and situations, you got Alexa Davis. She's on a three-fight losing streak. You got Sabina Mazo. She's on a three-fight winning streak. So, definitely, uh, it's going to be an interesting fight right here. Uh, if you could give us one prediction for February 27th, uh, besides the win, of course, uh, yeah. how do you think it's going to get done? Man, I think... It's a matter of time, you know, as, as soon as the round starts, I want to uh, not just control, you know, not, not just uh, control, but like frustrate her game and uh, start to put my work in, you know. I, I'm not predicting just to finish the fight in the first minute, but uh, definitely just blocking her and uh, not letting her game develop. She's going to start. I can start seeing the, you know, the, the opening spaces that she will have and from their finish. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, everybody, everybody has to tune in. Uh, so real quick before we go, if you could just give us a special little shout out for seconds out. It's a little saying we like to say we like to say seconds out. Forget about all the other ones. We're the best out. If I could get that, I would love it. Seconds out. Forget about the other shows that we're the best yeah. out. There we go. There we go, man. You Try guys, my best. <laughs> didn't even know. You guys got Sabina Mazo, the rapper now in there, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Before I let you out of here, yes, Slaughter, wouldn't be right. He always asked this question. So what's the weirdest superstition or family tradition you guys have? Oh, superstition or family tradition. So look, Sabina, let me tell you one Impa Kasagni has. Every single year, still nowadays, they dress up for Christmas and try to find Santa Claus. <laughs> Still, still. So that's one that they have in their family tradition. Well, there, there's a tradition, but it's not only family. I think it's a cultural thing from Colombia 
that uh, every New Year's Eve you have to get your bags and like run around the street with the bags, you know, that's going to give you uh, like some kind of luck to travel a lot next year, you know, so you just see a bunch of people with bags running in the street and that's <laughs> kind of <laughs> weird tradition, you know. Yeah. Speaking about relaxing and getting ready for the morning, what's that one song that you play that just puts you in the mood, you know, no matter what, to where it just changes up your day and brightens up everything? What's that one song you have? Well, I, I don't know. I have one song, but one artist, I would say, and I think a lot of people agree, it's Bob Marley. You can, whatever you're doing, you can put Bob Marley in, your, cha- your day is going to, you know, get better. So, yeah, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. I hear you on that.